Amen. Praise the Lord. Is the Lord worthy? I said, isn't our God worthy? Amen. 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 This morning, come on, I want to invite everyone that can stand, please stand. This morning, we are so blessed as we entered into God's house today. This is Palm Sunday, Bryn Mawr. This is a day where we celebrate. This is the kickoff of Holy Week, and we celebrate our God. We celebrate Jesus for dying on Calvary's cross. But today, we celebrate as he entered into Jerusalem. They waved palm branches to welcome his presence in to the city. And as you have palm branches in your hands, I want you to wave them and welcome God's presence in this place welcome God's presence in your home welcome God's presence in your family welcome God's presence in your finances welcome God's presence everywhere you go do me a favor wave your palm branches over your neighbor and welcome God's presence over your neighbor over the choir over the ushers over the musicians over our children and we celebrate and welcome God, welcome Jesus. Come on in, have your way, do what you do. We give God the glory today. Amen, amen, and amen. This morning, to read our morning scripture, you can find it in Matthew chapter number 21, verses 1 through 11. Uh, if you want, have it on your device or have it in your Bible, or some of you may have it printed. But today, to lead us in our morning scripture, we have Lyric, who's going to read our morning scripture this morning. Come on, let's give her a hand as she reads for us.
their coat or the robe. Others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. Some of the people went ahead of him and some followed, they all shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus enters Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. The people asked, who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus. He is the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. We celebrate you, Lyric. And come on, can you say Hosanna one more time for me? Hosanna. 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 Amen. Come on, let's give her a hand. I would invite for you to pull those hymn books out as we get ready to sing our morning hymn this morning. Come on, please remain standing as we sing our morning hymn. Amen. Our morning hymn can be found on 281. Amen. It's simply because he lives. Amen.
because he lives one more time because How many of you came to give God some praise this morning? Hallelujah. Are we glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. So we just join you to have a little praise party with us this morning. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. One, two, three. Put your hands together with us. Hey. Can I hear a little good talk? <laughs> Everything, my 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 everything,
Pour your love out to him. Come on, pour your love out to him. Come on, come on. Come on, pour your love out to him. If you really love the Lord, if you really are thankful for Jesus, come on, tell the Lord thank you. Pour your love out to him. Worship him for just a moment. Come on, he's been good. He's been kind. He's shown up time after time, made ways out of no ways, provided, protected, has been your keeper, has been your Lord, has been your all and all. Anybody here really love him on today? Amen. Say, I love you, Lord. Somebody say, I love you more than my house. I love you more than the clothes I have on. I love you more than stuff. God, you've been good to us. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. As we celebrate God on today, you may take your seats if you can. We praise and thank God for who God is and that all that God has done for us, to us, and through us. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to be in God's house today. Amen. 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 Your neighbor doesn't know what you went through this week, but you are here. You made it into God's house, and for that we give God glory. And to those of you that are worshiping with us online, we are so thankful and grateful for you worshiping with us today. We realize that there are a host of churches you scrolled past, possibly, but you're here with us virtually, and we praise and thank God for you. Amen? Amen. Are there any first or second time guests that are worshiping with us today? If you're a first or second time guest, do me a favor, raise your hand. I want to acknowledge you. Family right here, my family right here, my brother right there in the back. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. Come on, Bryn Mawr, let's make some noise. For our first and second time guests, amen. We realize that there are a host of churches that you all could have um, worshiped with in person today, but we are so grateful that you decided to worship with us today, and we are elated to have you. I do want to ask a simple favor for those that are worshiping with us. Bring it down a little bit for me, band. I do want to ask a simple question for those that are worshiping with us for the first or second time today, is that if you would pull out your phone, your smart device, and do me a favor. There should be a QR code located on a seat back in front of you. If you're a first or second time guest, scan that QR code for me. Um, simply give us your name, um, and when you scan it, click on the link that says, I'm new at BMCC. And when you click on that link, give us your name, um, your email address, preferably a real one, and a telephone number, preferably one that you check and answer, amen. Um, but later this week, you'll hear from me as a means to say thank you for worshiping with us today. Um, and Bryn Mawr, if you see somebody in your neighborhood that is a first or second time guest, uh, shake their hand, give them a wave, a fist bump, a hug, a something. Show them some love. Amen. I don't see Bryn Mawr moving. Bryn Mawr, you saw a guest that was seated in your area. Show them some love. Amen. 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 Show them some love. Amen. There we go. Um, as we get ready to, uh, to continue on in worship, um, one of our guests today, one of our guests today is a, is a young brother who I had the privilege of meeting um, a couple of weeks ago. And um, we were at the South Shores uh, Quality of Life Plan update uh, that happened a couple of weeks ago. And um, uh, I met him, and he told me that he was, one, a member of the greatest fraternity, um, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Amen. But in addition to that, he also informed me that he was running for local school council in the South Shore neighborhood. And um, I believe wholeheartedly um, that, you know, he wanted to know if there was a possibility to be able to share with the congregation. I said, sure. 
Um, but I interview all of our guests that are running for any office, whether it's for mayor, alderman, uh, representative, state, U.S., Senate, all the way down to the local school council so that you can be an informed voter as a member of the community so that you can know um, who these persons are that are running. And so I want to welcome Paul Jones. Come on up, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, Paul, if you would, do me a favor. Um, tell us uh, who you are and tell us the position that you're running for and tell us a little bit about that, please. Thank you. Well, first off, uh, thank you all for having me today. My wife and my brother Chris Percy has also came out today. Appreciate y'all for having us. So, as Pastor Moore said, my name is Paul Jones. Um, I'm running for the community member position on the local school council at South Shore International College Prep, which is 75th and Jeffrey. And before I go into a little bit about me, I just want to talk a little bit generally about local school council, why it's so important. So local school council has three important functions, right? They're in charge of budgeting, they're in charge of hiring, firing, and renewing the principal contract. And in my opinion, one of the most important functions of it is that it sets the, uh, the disciplinary uh, policies and procedures uh, for the kids in the school. So that goes into things like um, how do we handle disciplinary issues? Do we use restorative justice uh, techniques? Do we do more punitive measures? Things like that. And so the local school council is comprised of community members, teachers, parents, as well as teachers and staff. And so why I'm running is because one, um, I believe in investing in juveniles is an important uh, part of being a community member. Now, I'm not just saying this because I'm in the church, but I literally grew up in the church. Covenant United Church of Christ was my home church. And my parents growing up, they worked a lot, so my mom made sure that my sister and I was in church Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes <laughs> Thursday. So, you know, I was there Monday for choir practice, Wednesday was Usher, and then Friday was Junior Deacon, and then, you know, Sunday was, we were there from 7.30 to 3 p.m., so <laughs> that's how it went. But, but it was there, though, where I really learned a lot of the values that I have today, about compassion, justice, caring for others, and more importantly, as I said before, what does it mean to be a good community member, right? So when I was in church, you know, I had 10 aunties, 10 uncles, you know, and everyone knew the good that I did and celebrated my wins, and they also knew the bad. So if I did something wrong in school, you better believe I was having, hearing 10 conversations by 10 different people <laughs> and <laughs> making sure that I got my act straight. But it's because of that, though, that it led me to grow and develop into the man that I am today. And so after I graduated from high school, I went to college, um, was a union organizer for a couple years, uh, went to law school, and after law school, I started my career in juvenile justice, which is how I got interested in investing in kids and um, now I work as a legislative coordinator for the Cook County under the office of President Tony Franklin. Amen. And so the role, excuse me, so the role of local school council um, and the elections for it for elementary schools takes place on April 10th. Um, for high schools, which what you're running for, takes place on April 11th. How are persons able to um, participate in that process for both elementary school and high school? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so one, anyone in the community can vote for a community member position. So um, the way the district set up, it goes as far as the Jackson Park Highlands area all the way down to about 91st and Stoney. So if you're in that area, um, you can definitely vote. And on April 11th, uh, the polls will open at 6 a.m. and they close at 7 p.m. And voting takes place at South Shore International College Prep, which is at, um, as, you, as you all know, 75th and Jeffrey down the street. So you can vote anytime, as long as you come with two forms of ID. Um, Voting is pretty simple. Uh, you go there and just mark off names. Hopefully, mark off Paul Jones for commu community member. And um, after that, you're done. And uh, uh, that uh, that evening. And what do you see um, as a community member in South Shore um, as two of the biggest issues you think that the local school council can help to address? as it relates to our youth, particularly our students at um, South Shore uh, International College Prep? Oh, definitely. Well, first and for foremost, access and transparency. Um, when I've been knocking on doors and talking to folks, a lot of people don't even know what the local school council is. Um, and a big reason for that is because it's, there's not a lot of access and transparency to the meetings. Um, so one, we need to address that by having, um, making sure that more of our meetings are on Zoom or recorded so that the community can see it. We need to make sure the information is out there when the meetings are held, the minutes from the meeting, things like that so that 
the community is informed about what the local, local school councils are doing and also aware of the problems and issues uh, that are happening at the school and how to address them. But then two, we also need to uh, focus more on uh, providing more resources in the form of test prep and college preparation to our kids. Um, there's not a lot of uh, issues, to f uh, there's not a lot of focus on that right now and the local school council has a lot of authority in pushing that. So I would say those are the two biggest issues. Amen, amen. Well, thank you, uh, Brother Paul. Um, Paul Jones, who's running for local school council for South Shore International College Prep. Um, I want you to pray for him, but also pray for our children. Amen. Amen. And there's a reason why we need those who are committed um, and that can be shining examples for our young people, um, serving in roles that impact our young people. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand. Amen. As we get ready to continue further in our worship experience, um, uh, today's Palm Sunday, next Sunday's Easter Sunday. Uh, again, I wanna invite everybody to invite somebody to church next Sunday. <laughs> um, but today, our speaker today is our, our very own sister, um, our sister, she's my sister. Uh, and has served here at Bryn Mawr. Um, what I love most about uh, our Reverend Devona is the fact that before she joined and when she joined, um, she came, hit the ground running, ready to serve. And that's really what God requires of us, is that we serve God, that we serve God. Don't serve one, not necessarily serving one another, but serving God, sometimes by way of serving one another, but ultimately serving God. And so we praise and thank God for her. So I want to invite everyone to stand as we get ready to welcome her, as she gets ready to break the bread of life today. Do me a favor, stretch your hands toward her and say, Reverend Devona, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. Come on, you all, let's give it up and let's praise and thank God for Reverend Devona, soon to be Dr. Aline. That's great for me, but let's praise the name of our God. Can we celebrate God on this Palm Sunday? Is it a good day to praise the Lord? Well, let's stay right there and just praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, praise him. What's his name? Jesus. Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Somebody doesn't know what Sunday it is. Go ahead and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. From the rising up, from the rising of the sun, until the going down of the same. Go ahead and wave those palms because he's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. we turn in our Bibles for our scripture reading. Our scripture today for our time together is coming from Luke chapter 19. 
beginning at verse 37. Luke 19, verses 37 through 40. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Say amen if you have it. Say amen if you have it, Luke 19, 37. Y'all have it? Amen. It reads from the New American Standard Bible, as soon as he, Jesus, was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. For our time together, Bryn Mawr, we will labor under the title, When Stones Cry. When Stones Cry, let us pray, God, our creator, we thank you for the privilege and the foolishness of preaching. We thank you for the power of our voices. We ask, oh God, that you hide me behind the cross, but remove the temptation for me to hide who you've created me to be. Holy Spirit, we ask that you show up and challenge us and then change us so we will do your will as a result of your word. God, we ask these things, hopefully with expectancy in Jesus' name and all the people of God said, amen. Amen. When stones cry, when stones cry, that's the shortened version of my original title. This is what it sounds like when stones cry. Good morning to all of you and our online worshipers. Y'all, it's Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. This is the day that we recognize Jesus's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the start of what fourth century Bishop St. Athanasius deemed Holy Week or Passion Week. Passion does not mean this emotional intensity that we've come to define it as, but passion in this case is from the Latin root pati, which means to suffer or endure. It's this week that we acknowledge the suffering and endurance of Jesus for our sake. Y'all will have to excuse me if I get excited. I am so excited about this week. It is foundational to our faith. We recognize this week as the core of our belief. This week comprises, obviously, today, Palm Sunday, where Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey. In the, as in the Gospel of John, they wave the palms, crying, Hosanna. This week also includes Holy Monday and Tuesday, where Jesus cleanses the temple and begins teaching in parables. This week also includes Spy Wednesday, where Judas Iscariot put it in his heart to betray Jesus. And it also includes Monday, Thursday, which we will observe here at Bryn Mawr, where Jesus gave the mandate that we serve one another. And he did it by bowing down and washing his disciples' feet. This is the week that we recognize Good Friday, the day that they crucified my Lord and ended his life on earth as history knew it to be at the time. This is also the week we acknowledge Jesus' walk toward death, his betrayal by his friends, his bleeding at the hand of his enemies, and his suffering unfairly for his sins, and ultimately his dying to deliver us from the sting of death. But today we find ourselves at the start of this week, this holy week, this passion week in our text as Jesus is entering Jerusalem. When stones cry, dig if you will, the picture. Of you and I immersed in this crowd in our text, the shed blood of Jesus pending even as he is approaching, we find ourselves in the midst of Jesus' disciples, many more than 12, singing and shouting lines from Psalm 118. They're crying out, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. 
Based on our text, using our sanctified imagination, we can hear the shouts of victory, the declarations of gratitude for what Jesus has done. They're praising him for his mighty acts. They're praising him for his wondrous works. The memory, they're praising for the memory of the fact that he has been a healer. They're praising him that he has been a deliverer. They're praising him that he has made ways out of no way. Maybe y'all don't know what that is. They're praising him because Jesus is the son of God and he is coming to save us from our sins. They're praising him that he's fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. They're praising him because he's walked on water. He's calmed the raging sea. Perhaps the people shouting are those who saw a blind man be given his sight. Perhaps they're praising him because they've seen a man who was insane be restored to sanity. I bet Lazarus is in this crowd once dead but now alive. Maybe in the crowd shouting, holy is the lamb is a woman who had an issue of blood. Maybe in the crowd is a woman who was caught in a who has gone to sin no more. Maybe in the crowd there are people who have experienced Jesus' miracles. I'm certain that as I stand here during Women's History Month, there were other women there because the women were always there. The women ain't going nowhere. They were there then. They're here now. They're here to stay declaring that Jesus is Lord. If you were in this crowd, you might be among them remembering what Jesus did for you. And you would cry out, Lord, save us. Hosanna. We worship you. Maybe you, too, would cry out, blessed be the king who comes in the name of the Lord. I invite you to consider being surrounded by this multitude of people, but also to be aware that not everyone in this place of celebration is on the same page. This group of people standing to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, amid people throwing their clothes on the ground to lay a path before him, amid people shouting, this crowd is a crowd of mixed company. It's a, a, a circle, if you will, of mismatched arcs. This crowd is a, a, a congregation of counterintuitive ideologies. This crowd is a mixed crowd. It's a crew working perhaps at cross purposes. It's a horde of folks, half declaring Jesus is blessed, and the other deciding to miss the miracles and focus instead on the method in which the message of the miracle worker is being received. Tell your neighbor they're not all the same. In this crowd, this multitude, we have some singing and shouting juxtaposed with others who are seemingly silently judging and perhaps justifying their silence with some form of respectability, some version of, mm -mm, we don't do that here. The disciples of Jesus are the ones recording and shouting, blessed is the king. Meanwhile, some of the Pharisees are the ones recorded, recorded as saying, this is according to Devona's translation of scripture, these other people, they're saying, Jesus, mm -mm, get your people, get your people. You see, some of these Pharisees are sitting around watching this triumphant entry of Jesus, but they're only there to crush and criticize the cries of the people. Verse 39 says, and yet, while this is going on, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Pharisees, you understand, were a population of socio-political religious influencers. They were decisively separate from the common folk. They reserved themselves for the sake of religious piety, for the sake of religious purity, for the sake of religious preservation. But don't be fooled, it's clear if you follow the traditional biblical narrative of the Pharisees, they were also propelled by their pursuit to maintain power. They were Pharisees. Of course they would have a problem with people following Jesus and acknowledging his authority. They were Pharisees. Of course they were suspicious of Jesus' reinterpretation of the law. They were Pharisees. Of course Jesus' miracles, his message, and his method countered their monopoly over the oral tradition of Judaism. They were Pharisees. Of course we see them as separate from who we are today. Tell your neighbor they may be closer than you think. Interestingly enough, these Pharisees, this group of people, they were a heterogeneous group of people. None of them were the same as the others of them. They didn't have a particular identity. 
they weren't part of a certain family, they, they didn't carry a particular profession, they didn't even share a single social class. They, like this original crowd, were also a mixed bag. They were this and they were that. They were a group of they's, these Pharisees. They could be categorized as the days of today, the they's who separate themselves with a tendency to silence the opinions and silence the expression of them folk over there, the these. So with the Pharisees, you had the they's and they did not like what the these over here were doing. It seems that in our text, the they's only had the nerve to call on Jesus as a means of suppressing these. Have you ever seen people who were the they's and all they seem to care about is what these are doing? The Pharisees in our text were the they's. They were only calling on the name of Jesus to perpetuate injustice. Because of the they's who may, may cite thou shalt not kill out of their mouths, these they's kill black and brown bodies with limits on health care. They cut Medicare, they dismiss care for immigrants, and they declare in their actions, I don't care. I want to caution you to beware of the they's. The they's call Jesus a teacher, but throw away Jesus' lessons of love for all people. These they's throw away the these who don't fit their image of saved, sanctified, churchy. They don't fit the image of their pharisaical norms. Beware of the they's who are quick to stand up and cite themselves anonymously about what they say regarding what should and shouldn't be done in the name of the Lord in and outside of church. Beware of the they's. Beware of the days who care less about worship but want to police the being and behaviors of true worshipers who just want to see Jesus. Beware of the days. Beware of the days who seem to have a lot of influence, but they have no intention of seeing what Jesus comes to bring. These days, these days who care about the these, they selectively read John 3:16 and 17. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Beware of the they's who add qualifiers to the whosoever. These they's miss this next verse in 17 where it says God did not send the son into the world to judge the world but so that the world might be saved through him. Beware of the they's. I encourage you to beware of the they's who can't see salvation because they are consumed with sin and the reason they only see sin is because they're sporting sin-stained spectacles. Beware of the they's. Beware of the they's who will always have something negative to say about these. Do me a favor, preach for me and tell your neighbor, beware of the they's. These they's in our text, these Pharisees, these Pharisees, these they's, they have the nerve to tell Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. What I love about Jesus, Jesus always has an answer that is not what we expect, but it's the answer that's needed. He's our great example, especially in the face of oppression. Jesus answers these pharisaical requests for rebuke with a parabolic response. In his seeming infinite wisdom, Jesus counters the days on behalf of these, saying in verse 40, I tell you, if these stop speaking, the stones will cry out. Now that's the version from the NASB, the New American Standard Bible. If these should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. That's the KJV. If these were silent, the stones would shout out. That's the NRSV. If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. That's the NIV. This ain't written nowhere, but the V of me and my African-American faith tradition says, if these should hold their peace, the very rocks will cry out. And I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Is that anybody's testimony? Throughout our faith history, We've acknowledged the potential shame of stones crying out praise for our Savior instead of us. But the reality is we have collectively found ourselves as believers politically silent, 
socially silent, practically silent, and spiritually silent when it comes to recognizing the presence of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the peace of Jesus, and the purpose of Jesus. It isn't that the they's have succeeded in silencing these, it's that these have silenced themselves. We often claiming to be among the these, maybe we've gotten tired, we've gotten weary, we've lost our way, we've gotten comfortable, maybe we have forgotten what it means that Jesus is close by coming through. We've forgotten what it is for Jesus to be what was, what is, and is to come. Perhaps for the sake of peace, we've held our peace about the Prince of Peace, and we've allowed the they's to get their way. It's all right to be human, God forgives, and God has something for our, for our memory to remind us of what we need to do. Jesus, in his answer to the Pharisees, offers a metaphorical scenario of inanimate objects crying out praise for a new kingdom, a revolutionary way to be a freedom, a peace that passes all understanding. Because we've been silent, we've seen the work of Jesus celebrated in unexpected places. Secular spaces have become more accepting of people than spiritual spaces. This is what it sounds like when stones cry. You are more likely in our world to get unconditional love and care from agencies and organizations who deliberately avoid mentioning Christianity in their bylaws, while in a Christian space, somebody might be arguing about bylaws before helping those in need. This is what it sounds like when stones cry. Among people, you may find stronger bonds among friends who don't attend church than you might among people inside the walls of a faith community. In these spaces, the love of Jesus is just a song inside, but the love of the world has become more tangible, more proven, more trusted, and more sought after. This is what it sounds like when stones cry. But when stones cry, we've been made to think that this is a bad thing. I'm getting excited as I, as I begin to tell you not to discount the cry of a stone. Don't overlook the significance of a stone. Don't dismiss Jesus' decision to cite the capacity of a simple stone to cry out. If these should keep silent, the stones will cry out. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor, a stone is a sign. Did you know a stone was a sign? And so if stones start to cry, that's information for us to do something. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this is good to me. Throughout biblical history, a stone was a marker of something to remember. A stone was a placeholder for something that in case I forget, now I have a reminder. In Genesis, Jacob uses the stone to remind him and those after him of God's presence. In Exodus, the stones in the breastplate of the high priest served as a reminder of the 12 tribes. Jewish tradition utilizes stones placed on the graves of the deceased for a variety of reasons, but many of those reasons point toward remembrance. We too have adopted placement of a stone to remember those we have lost. Because they're larger, we might call it a tombstone. We might call it a headstone. We might call it a gravestone. Whatever the stone, the purpose of its, of its existence is to remember. And I know I'm talking about death for stones, but if some of you raise your left hand, there may be a stone that reminds you of a commitment you made to somebody else. Babe, I'm wearing my ring today. And as I look at this stone from 15 years ago, I am reminded of the love my husband has for me. Stones are reminders of things that we have forgotten. So Jesus says the stones will cry out. It seems to be that when the stones cry, that is a clarion call for us to remember something. They remind us when stones cry, I've, I've held my peace for too long. When stones cry, they're serving me notice that I've missed my cue. When stones cry, that is the reminder that it's time for me to wave my hands. When stones cry, that's the time for me to remember to do my dance and to shout hallelujah for the Savior has come. When stones cry, that is not a time for us to be ashamed. When stones cry, that is the time for us to stand up and shout out, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Lord. When stones cry, it's the affirmation for adulation, do my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When stones cry, it's a broad invitation to praise ye the Lord. When stones cry, it's a confirmation for a celebration. When stones cry, it's a declaration for exaltation. When stones cry, it's a foundation for glorification of the one who came from 40 and two generations to save a wretch like me. When stones cry, there is no need for hateration or holleration in this dancery. It is a party going on. It is time to praise the Lord. When stones cry, it's an invocation underway. Jubilation is on the agenda. When stones cry, it's not a lamentation, but it's motivation for every nation to give a standing ovation and proclamation that salvation is here. In case you missed it, when stones cry, it's time for recitation of Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. I might need a reminder. Thank you, stones, but I don't need no stones crying out for me because I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. It's all right if you need a stone to remind you that he's worthy of our praise. But when you get the message, when you get it over here, when you get it over there, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt the name of the Lord together. It's Palm Sunday. Jesus is entering Jerusalem. We are these who cannot hold our peace. He's done too much. He's been too good. And the Lord, I said the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. So we say, come, almighty king. Help us thy name to sing. We've come to praise thy name. I said, we've come to praise thy name. So I'm going to praise him with every dance that I got. I'm going to praise him while I have a chance. I'm going to praise him all day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Help me praise him. Stand to your feet and help me praise him. The stones might remind us, but I'm grateful for the reminder. But dear stone, I got it from here. I got it from here. God bless you, Bryn Mawr. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Give God praise. I don't need no stones crying out for me. I'll take the reminder, but I got it from here. I got it from here. When stones cry, when stones cry, everybody standing if you can, stand if you can to honor the Lord. When stones cry, God, we are so grateful for your triumphant entry. We're so grateful that you came to save us. We lift our hands because you're worthy. We praise you because you're worthy. We're thankful that you saw fit to save us. God, as we gather in this place, remember, help us remember to praise you. Help us to not miss any signs that it's time to give you glory. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Reverend Devona a hand. Now somebody give Jesus a hand. Come on, don't let all of this stone building cry out for you. Somebody give Jesus a hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. We love you. We worship you. We glorify you. We thank 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 you. 
We thank you, 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 we thank you. You've been good to us, you've been kind to us. We say thank you. You saved us when we were unlovable. You loved us when we were yet still sinning. You died for us. We thank you. If it had not been for you on our side, we would have died. We would have been killed. We would have been swallowed up. But God, we thank you. We say thank you in this place. We praise you. When we think of the goodness of Jesus, when we look at a stone and remember what happened on that stone, on how it was rolled away, and when they went to the tomb, it was empty because you got up early Sunday morning. So we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for saving us for keeping us, for redeeming us, for snatching us from the hand of the enemy. Thank you. Oh, come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. No music, I want to hear the people. Open up your mouth, come on, come on, open up your mouth. Let the praises ring in this place. As we stand today ooh, with grateful hearts. Y'all, I'm, I'm trying to move on, but I just keep having memories and flashbacks. <laughs> I keep thinking about what God has done for me. I'm sorry, this really isn't about you, but I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be up here to lead y'all, but I'm sorry, I'm leading myself right now. When I start thinking of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my, my soul gets happy, my, my feet get light, my hands get the wave, and my voice gets a little loud, and I say, God, I thank you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I adore you. God, you've been good. God, you've been kind. And I just want to say thank you. Y'all, now, nah. if y'all serious about it, we can be serious about it, but if y'all gonna play with it, sit down, but if you know God's been good to you, come on, let's take about the next 30 seconds and give God a praise for what God has done. Come on, one, two, one, two, three, go. My, my, there may be somebody in this place today that needs to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday is a day that we celebrate Jesus Christ coming into the, into the city of Jerusalem, but we also celebrate and welcome him coming into our lives. 
If there's somebody in this place today that needs to accept and commit your life to Jesus Christ, to acknowledge the work that Jesus Christ did for you on Calvary's cross, on next Sunday, we'll celebrate him getting up. But today, I don't want you to wait till next Sunday because the Bible teaches us that tomorrow is not promised to any man or to any woman. And so if you're in this place today, while we were celebrating and thanking God for the gift of salvation, it is because we realize that if it had not been for God to save us, our lives would be a mess, more than a mess than what they are right now. And so if you're in this place today and you want to commit your life to Jesus Christ, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I would invite for you to do me a favor. Stand right where you are. Step out into the aisle and walk this way. Or perhaps you'll say, well, pastor, I am saved, but I strayed away. I backslid. I gave, did some things I shouldn't have done, been some places I shouldn't have done. Come on, do me a favor. Come on down this way. Come on, is there somebody else? Is there somebody else you need this to be your church home? You say, well, pastor, I'm saved, but I don't have a church home. Hear me clearly. If being in church is good, being out of church has to be bad. And so if you're in this place today and you don't have a church home, if, you, if I asked you the name of your church and you would start stumbling and stuttering, uh, I would say you need a church home. If I asked you the name of your pastor and you don't, can't tell me the name of your pastor, I would say, you need a pastor. We would love to be your church. I'd love to be your pastor. Is there another, is there another to commit and to give their life to Jesus Christ or to unite with us as a body of believers? If you're in this place today, do me a favor, stand where you are. Come on down this way. All right, Bryn Mawr, do me a favor, lean to your neighbor, ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you saved? Do you have a church home? If they say, no, I'm not saved, no, I don't have a church home, politely grab them by the hand, bring them on down this way. Amen, amen. Well, come on, let's praise and thank God for our brother and our sister, my brother and my sister. Amen. We love y'all. Amen. Amen. Uh, do me a favor. Stretch your hands this way. Pray for them. God, we thank you for um, both Percy and Imani committing to unite with us as a body of believers. We pray, God, that you strengthen them, strengthen us as we continue to walk this journey together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you will do me a favor, Percy and Imani, follow our deacons. They're going to get some information from you and they will bring you right back after these messages. Come on, let's praise and thank God for our new official, I say our, they my family, but for our new official family, amen, amen. Come on, you may be seated. Uh, as we prepare um, to give, let's prepare our hands and our hearts to give back to the God that's given us everything. As we get ready to give, Giving is our opportunity to express to our God in a tangible way our thanks and appreciation for all that God has done. The music was bu bumping, the hands were clapping, the palms were waving, but G God's word reminds us that there's another way that we can give glory and honor to God, and that's tangibly with our gifts. And so we choose to do so um, by means, you know, in the, in the Old Testament, they would, in the biblical times, they would bring turtle doves and rams and pigs and lambs to be slaughtered. Uh, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, ham, lamb, all, yeah, they would bring all of that to be slaughtered <laughs> to give honor to God. Well, thankfully today, um, this house of worship does not stink with the smell of livestock. You're going to catch that on the ride home. But today we brought our gifts um, to tell the Lord thank you. If you want to give, uh, you can give by way of cash or check. You can use the offering envelopes that are located in the seat back in front of you. If you don't see one there, simply raise your hand and one of our ushers will be so glad to make sure that you get hooked up in the right way. But if you're like me and say, well, pastor, I didn't bring cash, I didn't bring checks. But if you brought your cell phone, you brought your debit card, 
you can give electronically by scanning the QR code that's located on the seat back in front of you. When you scan that QR code, click on the link, and then when it pops up, click the link that says, I want to give. When you click that link, it'll take you directly to our website where you can give safely and securely. Amen. As we give today, we give knowing that God's word is true, that when we give one dime out of every dollar back to God, God's word reminds us that he gives it back to us. His word teaches us that when we do that, when we give our tithe, that 10%, that God says that I will then open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. What is that, what is that telling me that, you know, it seems as if my bank account can be infinite as far as how much money I can put in it. That speaks to the way that God's blessing is infinite. When I give to God, God's blessing is so infinite that I won't have the room enough to receive it all in my bank account. I won't have the room to receive it all in my health. I won't have the room to receive it all in my joy. I won't have the room to receive it all in my love. So what, what happens? I have to then pour that same love, pour that same joy, pour those same resources out to others around me. And that's what happens when you give. The Bible says that when you give, God gives it back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, and shall men and women give back to you. And so when you give, it sets you up for the best investment plan. Amen? Amen. 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 If you're ready to give, shout, I'm ready. Amen. If you need some time, say, hold up. All right. All right. Seems like everybody's ready. Do me a favor. Hold those gifts in the air. Repeat after me. This is not a debt I owe, but a seed I sow. I'm sowing into good ground. Because I'm a tither and a giver, I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I am living in my overflow. And I am living Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life. Come on, give God praise as you get ready to give. Ushers, you may serve the people of God. While you're giving a few announcements, uh, this week is Holy Week. This week it kicks off um, the our 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 playoffs almost uh, for the Christian Church. You know how sports fans, if you are, are into sports, you know the playoffs leads to the championship. Uh, it leads to the Super Bowl. It leads to the fine. This is Easter Sunday is our Super Bowl. Amen. And we praise and thank God for. Um, just how God has blessed us as people by sending us Jesus. But this week we celebrate our God. And so today's Palm Sunday, as you have already received your palm. But this week, I want to invite for you um, to join us for some special services this week. Amen. So this Thursday night, this Thursday night, we will have a special Monday Thursday, not Mardi Thursday, like Mardi Gras. It's Monday Thursday. <laughs> Um, and we invite you to join us for a special foot washing and Holy Communion service as we'll welcome other churches and pastors from around our city. And my good friend from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, my brother, Reverend Anthony Miller, will also be in town. So I want to invite for you uh, to join us on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Those of you, if you're coming looking for a pedicure, wash your feet before you get here because I'm going to be doing the wash and wash your feet <laughs> before you get here. Um, uh, and we are going to serve communion before we start washing feet. Amen. 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 So join us on Thursday night at seven o'clock here on Friday. Good Friday. Somebody say good Friday. I want you, if you can, if you're free during the day, um, come meet me at New Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Um, it's located at 1850 West Marquette Road at 12 noon on Good Friday. I'll be preaching uh, uh, a seven last word service, and uh, I want to be able to at least look out in the crowd and say, uh, there, go my, there go my folks out there. And so if you're free on Good Friday at 12 noon, please join us um, at New Mount Calvary Baptist Church, 1850 West Marquette Road. Amen. And then also on... Uh, Easter Sunday, as I may mention, next Sunday 
is Easter Sunday. We're going to celebrate our God, celebrate the resurrection. Invite somebody to church. I want to ask all of our members, invite at least five people to church next Sunday. Um, those of you that, uh, uh, you should check your emails. Yesterday an email went out. You should check your emails um, for Good Friday information, Palm Sunday, I mean not Palm Sunday, but Good Friday, Monday, Thursday, but also Easter Sunday flyers. Take that flyer and text it to at least five people. Uh, post it to your social media um, and help spread the word and invite somebody. Um, and then we'll have an Easter egg hunt for our kids immediately following service on next Sunday. Amen? If you want to volunteer, please see Sister Eleanor Williams. Sister Eleanor, stand up, please. Sister Eleanor, if you want to volunteer for the Easter egg hunt, see her. Um, she's going to, uh, she's taking a lead on that. Um, and if there's any way, if you want to give some candy, make sure it's prepackaged. Amen. Um, individually wrapped. Amen. Um, uh, and fresh. Amen. And nut free. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because a lot of a lot of people have allergies. Um, so please, no nuts. So leave the Snickers and the uh, uh, and the Three Musketeers and all. You leave that to the side. You keep that in your own stash. Um, but bring some stuff that's nut free for our kids uh, for next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Um, let's all stand as we prepare to get out of here. Um, two more announcements. So one. Um, Immediately after service, our church council will be meeting um, in the uh, main office in a conference room. So please, please, uh, council members, let's uh, prepare to go for that. And then on Tuesday, April 2nd, so next Tuesday, not this coming Tuesday, right? N yeah, the following Tuesday, April 2nd, um, I want to invite for you. We're going to send out the information as soon as we get it. Um, but again, your pastor is partnering up with another church. Um, to lead in Bible study. This is a Bible study on discipleship. God wants for all of us to be disciples. Matthew 28, 19 says, go into all the world, baptize them, teach them. Um, in other words, what Jesus was saying is make disciples. And so I want to invite for you to join us um, on Tuesday evenings at 630. Uh, we will send out the Zoom link uh, um, via email later this week um, and send out that information. It'll be posted on our social media as well. Amen. 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 We praise and thank God for all that God has done, all that God is doing, and all that God is about to do. My prayer for you is that you have a peaceful week this week and that you experience God's peace in everything you do. Peace. Jesus says, I leave it with you. When trouble comes, peace. Jesus said, My peace I give to you. I leave it with you. When trouble comes, peace. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us until we all meet again. I pray that you experience God's peace in your going and your coming, in your ups and your downs, in your laughter as well as your leisure. I pray that you experience God's peace on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and brings us back here safely on Sunday. It's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen, 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 amen. Hug somebody on your way out. Show them the love of God. Wrap your arms around them and pray the peace of God for them.